Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Bring Back the Brass, brought to you from the Brass Foundations team at Brass Band England. My name is Paul Fisher, and I am very, very pleased to welcome you to two really, really fantastic guests this evening. Uh, so would you please, in your virtual living rooms, give a big round of applause to Mr. Bob Childs and Mr. Roger Argente. Hello, chaps. Hello. Hi, Bob. Uh, hey, Bob, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, very good. Pleased to Lovely. be here. That's great. It's very nice to see the sun is shining in Wales this evening. Yeah. Very nice. And Roger Argenti, how are you, sir? Are you well? Yeah, I'm very well. Thanks for inviting me along. OK, it's a great pleasure. So my reasoning for, for wanting to speak to you guys this evening really is because uh, I'm a huge fan of the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. Uh, I'll hold my hand up. I am a Welshman, so you know that already, you guys. The first time I met you, Bob, was when I was a wee little lad at 14 years old in the National Brass Band of Wales. And probably the following course, Rod, you were yeah, my tutor, right. yeah. even though you're only about three years older than me, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, I, I, we all know how passionate the, the brass band scene is in, in Wales. The Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama is a fantastic place to go and study. And so I want to kind of put that out there to the whole nation, really. And certainly from the brass band point of view, uh, you guys run a fantastic course. And I know that you, Bob and yourself, Roger, will tell us a little bit more about that uh, very, very soon. I just want to tell everybody, uh, essentially, what a fantastic atmosphere is you've created at the Royal Welsh. You walk into the building. Everybody is smiling, everybody is chatting. There's a warm welcome. And that is such a wonderful thing that you've created. And the, the standard of musicianship is great. So I thought we would start this evening by a little video uh, of what goes on. Someone's dog's having a bark. It's, one of, it's one of mine, sorry. I'm going to try and do something about it. Uh, one, uh, this is a video of a brass course that was held at the college just about 18 months ago, two years ago perhaps, and it was just a brilliant event, so I thought I would share it with everybody. So over to my able assistant, Sarah, who's going to show it with us. everybody i mean frankly that should have sold anybody that wants to go to music college <laughs> it looks fab look at the lineup of people you got my love it gordon campbell tom hutchinson owen far you guys you know it doesn't get much better than that does it fantastic so uh if i could start with you roger tell us a little bit about the brass department then of the royal welsh okay so the brass department is uh there's just over 100 students here i think it's 103 in fact i know there's 103 students uh, we have undergraduate and postgraduate. The postgraduate uh, cohort is quite small. There's seven students there. Uh, and the rest of the students, uh, 95 or 96, whatever it is, are undergrads. The undergrad course is a four-year course. Um, we take all the different instruments. So um, unlike most music colleges, uh, we have a brass band pathway, which is what Bob runs. So that allows us to take tenor horns, cornets, and euphoniums and baritones. Uh, as far as the trombones and tubers go, which obviously are the other instruments that we, uh, we need for a, for a brass band, uh, they come into the normal part of the college, but there is a pathway for them. I'm oh, sorry, I forgot flugelhorns as well. Um, there's a pathway for them where certain parts of the course are dealt with in a different way. Um, if I'll give you one example now, I won't go too much into detail, but right now, 
straight away, but for an example, um, orchestral extracts um, will be uh, occurring in the sort of third week of next term, and uh, the orchestral musicians will prepare orchestral extracts, as I said, uh, but the brass band students will be doing test pieces. So that, that's a sort of one of the sort of options that uh, the brass band pathway students have. But Bob can tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, we've got 22 different brass teachers, uh, mainly drawn from the three um, three main ensembles here in Cardiff. Uh, we have the Welsh National Opera and the BBC National Orchestra of Wales. And we also have a very strong relationship with Cory Band. They're our band in residence. And we see them every term uh, under normal circumstances. We see them every term for a concert. And um, there's a connection between the extracts and the test pieces in that when they get um, when they get marked on their exams, if they score seventy percent and above, they get an opportunity to take part in um, in, in projects involving those ensembles. Um, so that that's quite exciting in itself. Um, it's not just a, a sit next to a professional kind of um, opportunity. It, it's got a lot of integrity. There's a lot that goes into uh, planning. You know, for example, if it's Welsh National Opera, you could be in doing an opera, you could be doing some recording, whatever that, that and you, you're occupying that person's seat and doing that job for, for a week. But you have to, the incentive is to score score high and prepare in your extracts. It's amazing. And of course, it's important to tell people that there are many players in those brass uh, sections in all of those ensembles that started in brass bands. I can think of a fair few yeah, down yes, there that started, you know, and are huge brass enthusiasts, brass band enthusiasts right now. And they're very supportive of, of, of our movement. So, Bob, uh, I mean, all of these students that come to the Royal Welsh are so lucky to have you leading this course. You know, they couldn't really ask for anybody better. So that's fantastic. Tell us a little bit about the course and what would a kind of an average week entail for a brass band student there? Well, it's difficult to talk about an average week. Over <laughs> course, but uh, usually uh, we form two brass bands. Uh, and uh, the one brass band we call the repertoire band. And over the four years of their um, degree, they'll start at 1913, Labour and Love, and go through the golden period with uh, with Holst Island and uh, Elgar, um, move on to um, Eric Ball, Gregson, and right up to modern day. So they, they, the, the repertoire band uh, run, runs through uh, significant repertoire brass band movement and then uh, also and there would be a crossover of players in both bands we'll have the the concert brass band uh, which as the title suggests we we prepare for concerts we um, we do a concert every every term uh, and um, we do external concerts we come up to Regent Hall in London uh, we did your project of course which was fantastic uh, and and all, I mean we've 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 even toured Canada in the past. We'd, we'd look for you know opportunities to to perform. I mean in some ways the brass band students are, 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 are in some ways more grounded than some of the classical brass players because they know what they want to do when they come into college. You know they they they, yeah. they come into college they, they want to learn their instrument and play be the best they can be. Get really good tuition off players like the principals of Corey Band like. Uh, uh, Tom Hutchinson and uh, Owen Farr and yeah. like that, uh, and, and they sort of know that they want to be music teachers or, or something like that. But I tell you what, what, what's funny working with Roger is that sometimes we identify brass band players who just lack a little bit of confidence and yeah. and, and breadth of vision, and yeah. sometimes uh, we can just open up a cornet player to become a trumpet player. And, and go on actually to be a professional player. That, that's happened over my period at the college more than two or three times. I mean, I remember Chris, Chris Aveson coming, yeah. uh, 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 Chris Hart came coming to the college as a corner player. Uh, and, uh, and and he went out as, as a professional trumpet player and, and, and he's working up in Scotland now. Yeah. So you know, we, 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 keep our, we keep our eyes open, but it is, it is really good to have a band like the Corey Band in residence. Um, they'll tell you that without the college, they wouldn't exist. And I can tell you that without the link with them, it would be difficult for us. So that's a re it's, it's a real two-way 
sort of uh, I mean, a lot a lot of colleges and i'm not going to mention any names a lot of colleges have link-ups with brass bands that uh, if you research it it's a little bit superficial but um our our relationship with corey is real they come yeah. in our players go into corey band room uh people meet phil harper you know fantastic uh guy who i know works for brass band england a lot and um it's, it's real. And as you said, uh, it was about, um, oh, I suppose, five or six years ago now, we got a, a new uh, a new building at the college. And it really it's really opened up the college, the, the atrium, when you come in, it's, it's, it's really welcoming. If you kept on walking through the front door, you'd land up in Boot Park. Uh, and so it's, it's just a lovely place to study. It's not too big that we, it's not too big that we don't know the students. It's not too small that we can't form ensembles it's just about the right size that we we know the names of all the students and we can gear um we can gear the courses to suit their individual needs yeah and of course looking at that video you only have to look at the building and see the opportunities that are there you you know so gordon campbell and mike and then the natural trumpets so you know the, the sounds and and just everything that's that you created there the community is is fantastic so tell us then guys if i'm a 16 year old i don't know wherever i am in the country i play for my local brass band and you know i'm pretty i've got me grade eight and i'm thinking that this could be the career for me what would be my my sort of route and my aims you know the audition I've, maybe i've got an audition in a year's time and and what should i be looking to to achieve what what would you guys look for in an audition from me Go on, Rog. okay um before I answer that, because because we just Bob just happened to mention it, can I just show you show you some pictures of yeah, of course one you of my sort of Easter projects that I'm going to be working on is getting a PowerPoint of some of our work. So if I if I share this photo that I've got ready, yeah. Um, uh, oh, oh, sorry, one sec. <laughs> By the way, I, you mentioned Chris Hart, Bob. He he played a concerto with the RSNO last week, didn't he? I think he yeah, did the yeah, Hyde and other Hummel. Yeah, so yeah. that's worth checking out, people, for sure. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I've got it. So I was that, Chris Averson was with Bournemouth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chris Averson was here a couple of weeks ago. He gave a live concert with a one of our piano uh, students. So it was two alumni, Chris Dawn Hart. Dawn was on the piano, and Chris. Anyway, I'll show you this photo. Like, does okay, it works. Sarah, does it, if I just share this through Zoom, does that go onto your platform? Okay. I think well, you will. I guess we'll soon find out. <laughs> so these are just a few photos that, I've, I've, as I said, I'm working on a PowerPoint presentation, but just sort of shum, sums up what the um, place looks like, because it is still quite new. So if we go there, um, so there's the, the building, and then we'll go there. So this is... Yeah. I mean, that to me looks like an architect's drawing, but it, it is actually a real building. And this bit here is where the concert hall is. I'm not sure if you can see my scroller here. And that atrium, that, that is the way we normally would work, walk into college. Um, and then this is it from the other, other angle where we, we're sort of going up towards the building there. And just a quick uh, couple more photos from indoors uh, itself. And above, um, I think it, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm a sort of small town guy. I come from Neath, uh, which is about 35 miles from here. And it was an attraction. The job was an attraction for me to come home, if you like. I, I feel as if I've been very lucky and blessed with lots of opportunities to go all over the world and do lots of wonderful things. But I was still yearning for some more challenges. And coming back to Wales was, was a great one for me. But the city is quite small. It's, there's only 300,000 people in Cardiff. So it's the smallest uh, music college city in the country. Uh, here, here it is. This is the building from above, and this is Butte Park that Bob just talked about. We've got Cardiff Castle there, St David's Hall. These are all the municipal buildings, the library, the museum, the Senate, which part part of the, the Welsh government is based here and down in the bay, and the halls of residence. If I if I put a little X there, it's uh, it's about <laughs> here. So it's about a 12 minute walk into town from uh, the hall of residence and what I call over here a Studentville, which is Cates and growth park so the students are continually coming in and out and there's no you know there's no expenses for 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 traveling there's no time wasted in traveling it's just a very easy thing to do and here we are outside the hall hall itself um and one final shot this looks really sort of uh, i couldn't believe my luck when i found this photo bob but um this is the concert hall from above 
wow. which you saw earlier, and it just looks looks amazing. So we're very very lucky to have this. I'm going to stop that share now and come back to the the question you asked me. Um, so the, this last year obviously was um, uh, concerning because we didn't know how to uh, do the audition process. We had to sort of collectively get together, get our heads together, and uh, find the best way to do it. Um, the Royal Welsh very early in the day decided that it was only going to do uh, online auditions. Some of the other music colleges were, were umming and ahhing about this, but we we, we work under a devolved government in, in Wales, the same as the Scottish um, Scottish Conservatoire does in, in, in Glasgow, where the rules are different to in England. So we now are, are able to go out, but we've had a longer lockdown period. And before Christmas, we had some really difficult social distancing issues to deal with. It's six metres. We, we couldn't play. That wonderful concert hall stage I know. was eight people. We can only have eight people on stage at the same time. And now it's a bit more uh, similar to what's going on in England and the rest of the UK, where it's three and a half metres. So we decided to put our um, auditions exclusively online. Um, and it's a very interesting learning curve. And I, like most people in education and in the performing arts, we discovered that what we're doing right now, you had to get a grip on this extremely quickly. And uh, the inspiration for this came, came from very, very close to where we are now. It came from Bob's amazing son, David, where he put a virtual concert on, on Facebook, which was sort of jaw dropping in not just the virtuosity of his play. And actually, he was playing in that concert that you showed a film from earlier as well. It wasn't just as amazing uh, the quality of his playing, but the technological side of it as well, where he worked with an accompanist. It looked as if the accompanist was in the room with him, but he was on a large TV screen, flat, a flat screen TV on his, above his mantel place. Uh, he had pre-recorded the piano tracks and David played along with this, but played with such am amazing, exquisite musicality. And then he had some fun encores, which involved Bob later and a couple of other international students. Now, th these sort of hit the, hit the social media streams in about April, I think, um, of uh, maybe even be at the end of March of a year ago, which is when everything started going wrong. And, um, you know, it was sort of crikey. It, 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 here's a good benchmark about how you've got to get a grip on, on whatever it is. So we've, we've been doing that to a lesser extent with our students and with our potential students, trying to uh, encourage them to, to work with the technology, how to record themselves, perhaps using a backing track or a click track. What, what is the best way to record it? What is the best way to share it? You know, is it best to play live like this? Is it best to turn turn on your original sound, turn off your original sound, video editing, multi-tracking, all these kind of things? And it, it's been delightful to see. So the audition process happens um, in October, November. Uh, you and I, Paul, we, we're meeting next week to talk about young yeah. musicians in Hertfordshire, but I've been talking to many of the music services up and down the country about what's expected and who to talk to. And the first people you should talk to are your teachers, your parents, the people who have been in the bands that you've been in and give, give you recommendations. You should go there because of this. You should go there because of that. And take all those things and bring them all together and then start, you know, in researching a little bit further. So you need to be doing this research over the summer so that in September you're ready to apply for auditions in October, yeah. November, and then you need to record in time for October, November, and then you're going to get your results uh, in sort of December. Uh, usually by the end of January, all the results have come out uh, from that. Um, so it's a little bit of daunting when it sort of hits you after the summer. So if, if there are any yeah. students out there, uh, undergrads, postgrads, uh, who want to, uh, I know it's a bit of a party political thing here, if you want to get in touch with me, it's uh, it's my name, roger.argente at rwcmd.ac.uk. Uh, I don't know if Sarah's able to share that on, on my behalf, and we can have a conversation sure about can. it. But don't, don't leave it too late, folks, because I, I'm not saying too late isn't bad, but it, the, the whole process needs to be developed and thought out rather than just practicing your pieces and turning up. So, Bob, what you know that someone wants to come on your brass band course. What what kind of stuff would you expect from them at an audition? Are they, do they have to provide, uh, prepare two pieces, three pieces? Are there scales, the sight reading, the usual kind of things? Well, what what we look for 
above all else. I mean, it's good if they could play two pieces and it's good if they've got uh, good oral skills and, uh, and everything else. What, what Roger and I are looking for is potential. Yeah. And, and when we look at, you know, because a student doesn't know something doesn't mean to say that they lack intelligence. It just means that they haven't been shown it yeah. before. I mean, like, for instance, their school might have done a very practical A-level. Uh, another school yeah. might have done, I don't know, you know, bar corrals and, and all that sort of stuff. So people enter the college uh, at different levels of theory. And uh, that's one thing. But we, 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 we really look out for the potential in terms of the sound and uh, the technique and their attitude, all that sort of stuff. I think the thing is that with, with, with us, as I mentioned, we're, we're a relatively small college, uh, but we've got just as many ensembles as the biggest colleges. So we've yeah. got symphony orchestras, we've got chamber orchestras, we've got brass bands, wind bands, and all the rest of it. And so what you get if you come to the Welsh College is lots of performance opportunities. Now, what that means is uh, it's okay for us three. We know, we know what it's all about. The more you perform in public, the less nervous you become. Uh, and what we give our students is the opportunity to perform almost every week, twice a week, sometimes even more than that. And what they don't realise is the more that they perform in front of their peers, in front of an audience, in front of me, in front of Roger, the less anxious they become about playing in general. And, and that's a massive thing uh, in music. It's one thing to, to you know, practice at home. It's one thing to practice in a, in, in a, um, in a cubicle at, 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 at the college. But... The acid test for any musician is delivering the goods on a stage in front of the public. And over the four years, we, we give our students more opportunities to do that than I think most. I think it's the most important thing that we could anyone could get from this conversation, really, this evening is opportunity. Uh, you don't necessarily get that all around the country, but you guys deliver that in spades. And I think that's so important. We were just talking off air, Bob, earlier about, I asked you about last week. Can you tell us a little bit about the concert that you did last week at the college? Yeah, well, because we were, we were restricted with COVID. Um, I know that a lot of places are not doing any performances, but we, we, we as, as a brass band, we did a full uh, one hour lunchtime concert. We couldn't have more than uh, 12 players on stage at any one time, uh, but we did six pieces and each, each of the six pieces um, used 12 different players. So six 12s, there you go. Yeah. So it's a lot of students that played on stage. And, yeah. uh, and we, we, we loved the, um, the preparation. Uh, we loved the performance. And we loved the assessments. You know, there was a, a little bit of pressure on everybody. Uh, it, it, it's the only thing that's going on at the moment. You know, brass, the brass band movement thrives on competition. And, and I know... I know, Paul, you've been successful with the Corey competition. Uh, it's that's lovely true. When, and it's lovely Thanks when, for that clang. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely when you win, but it, it, we, we, we've managed through the pandemic to carry on giving performance opportunities uh, a little bit smaller than what we would normally do. But uh, we're looking forward to it now opening up, maybe coming to 15 players and then maybe 20 and a full, and a full band. That would be just idyllic. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. So my next question to you, Roger, is about musical pathways and futures, you know, future career opportunities. And I know that's something that you guys at the Royal Wells take very seriously. Uh, when I was at college, you know, when we were all at college, we just wanted to do what we could do. And, uh, and I remember being very lucky, actually. But uh, you're creating all these opportunities for people. So I know you've put a lot of effort into to thinking and, and putting stuff together with regard to musical futures, Roger. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, if I can just go back a step and, you know, talk a little bit very, very briefly about by myself, if you like. And that is, you know, you know Bob's reputation and, and everything that he and his family have achieved in, in this world is, is, you know, beyond reproach it, it, it's amazing Absolutely. But I, I my background slightly different in that I, I had quite a sort of it, it crossed to the left and it crossed to the right there were lots of different elements in in, in my, uh, my 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 musical development if you like um but it started small it started at my school level and um here we are. I just got a little photo I was going to share with you that I, I did this from a, a, a for for one of these um musical future lectures so this is um this is me around um, when I was about 16 years old. 
And, you know, I take, I've got this handy because it means a lot to me, you know, and there I am. This is on the stage at the Royal Albert Hall, the old boxing ring. Um, what is the date of this? 1978, that's right. So this is my school brass ensemble playing at the very first school proms at the Albert Hall. Um, and the school level music, the, just the local comprehensive school, and there's no political, you know, comment in that. It's just, this was the school, it's a mile from my house that I went to. Fabulous teacher there, Idris Reese, who was conducting still keep in touch with him. He put me into that brass ensemble world and the music services, West Glamorgan Music Services, used to have Philip Jones Brass Ensemble come down on a regular basis and then we'd have county ensembles, youth orchestra, youth brass band, you know, every opportunity I was away on residential courses. And then the top of the pyramid was the National Youth Orchestra of Wales and then the National Youth Brass Band of Wales, which is where we, we first met. Um, I was a founder member of, of that. I was on the very first course when I was just sort of getting my, my maturity, my, my age, I think I was about the last year where I could have applied for it. And um, I got in there and I loved it. So, you know, I've had this opportunity to play in big bands and playing function bands and brass ensembles and everything like that. And I want our students to have these opportunities. I would like them to try, those that have not played in a brass band to try brass band, those who play in a brass band to try early music and jazz. And, um, you know, it's just, um, it, it's, it's a big melting pot. That's what I see the music college as being, because that's what really influences you when you're about to leave. You know, the blue, it's all very well having blue sky thinking about what you want to do, but you need to pick up opportunities and skills that will allow you to do this. And when I do these uh, musical future lectures, I invariably ask a question, uh, can you give me three or four examples of where you'd like to be? Blue sky thinking, and the answers tend to be musical theatre, you know, playing in Wicked or something like that, uh, playing in the London Symphony Orchestra, other orchestras are available, uh, teaching and the military. Um, so those are the four things. But I, my research has put together a sort of about a 40 different niche, if you like, um, musical um, profiles, if you like. So that allows you to sort of allows you to fill up um, a, a, a schedule of work ranging from instrument maintenance to manufacture to early music to teaching um you know these kind of things we're talking now and an influencer yeah. who, who knew what an influencer was a couple of years ago you know it's, and i know people who do really well out of doing that and i think that's part of the benefit uh, and you can't really say there are many benefits from the pandemic but one of the benefits of the pandemic has been that we've all had to get a grip with this technology and we're going to use it uh, yeah. The caveat that goes with that is that it's never going to be as good as the real thing. But, you know, you can still make it pretty good. And that's that's basically what our music making has been like, you know, a sort of combination of some live and some on, online uh, teaching. So, you know, yeah. think, think about what you'd like to be doing. Think what you would like to be if you're uh, looking at college editions for this next autumn. What are you going to be doing in six years time? Is it too early to ask that question? Um, ask your friends, ask your family, ask your teachers, all those kind of things that will help influence you. So, yeah. yeah. Have a so from my point, my point of view as an educator, it's so important that if I'm sending kids and students to prospective conservatoires, that the people like you guys that are there have thought about all this stuff, you know, because in, that's not necessarily the case. So it's really fantastic that from my point of view, if I'm sending students to, to conservatoires, that I know that the people that are there are already focused on what the future is. Uh, just to come back to you, Bob, you know, we're talking about brass band and brass band repertoire. And, and I think it's really important to emphasize to the people that do come onto your course, the opportunity and the variety of repertoire that they do and how important that is when they go further afield into whatever ensemble they play, how much playing they get, I guess, and what different styles they play. And I know that you, you, you know, use a whole sort of, the, the repertoire is huge, isn't it, that you use in your concert platform? Yeah, it is, yeah. We did, uh, we did uh, uh, Henry V uh, with narration and, and, and actors and all sorts of things with, with the brass band uh, 18 months ago before, before the pandemic. We do, um, we've done Ragdams and Habaneras by uh, uh, Hans Werner Henser. Uh, we do Labour and Love by Percy Fletcher. You know uh, the, the full the full gambit of, of music. Uh, it's interesting actually that uh, in 1913, the Labour and Love 
uh, is uh, heralded as the first substantial piece written for brass bands. But uh, Trevor Herbert and John Wallace uh, discovered a Tedville Overture by Joseph Parry, which was uh, composed for a band just 20 miles up the, up the valley from where we are. And that was about 50 years before that. So we've got uh, great heritage in, uh, in, in Wales, uh, which is part of the, uh, part of the uh, course that, that, that I run, the a bandsmanship course. Uh, we, do course, we do lectures on uh, brass band education. Uh, we do uh, arranging for brass band, uh, conducting, um, yeah. score reading. We just, we, I've just done a, a, a thing now with, with brass band students about the um, Philip Wilby's The Red Priest, and uh, yeah. they conducted it. They've adjudicated six performances of it. Um, yeah, it, it basically, I think the Welsh College is a very flexible college. Uh, and we're small enough that we can we can, we can tailor the, the course, we can tweak the course to the to the needs of the individual students. I think that's probably one of the biggest things that yeah. we've got going for us. It, that's sort of my was my next question about how flexible you you, you know what is that goes on there. You know, well, and we, it's fantastic. We, 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 just just this week, Roger and I have been discussing a, a guy that came in on flugelhorn uh, and now wants to change to trumpet. We had to go through the right channels. That, that, that wasn't a problem that's been done. We've had corner players swap to, uh, uh, to trumpet and vice versa. Uh, one of our finest French horn players came in as a tenor horn player, would you believe? And, uh, and, and went out as the, 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 the best French horn player in the college. So it is, anything is possible with us within reason. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Roger, what would your, your final words be? What, you know, if, you had one thing to say about the Royal Welsh that you would encourage people to come down and take a look, what would it be? I think you, you, have, to be, you have to be efficient with your time. I, I don't like time wasting. I don't like wasting money like most people either. But, you know, I, I, I can't overemphasize the, the, the feel of, you know, a nice, a nice size city, 300,000 people, as I mentioned, uh, walking everywhere, you know, when, when pandemic li lifts, we have, you know, there's a good social scene, there's culture. Um, and there, we, we haven't spoken about the, the, the rest of the brass band community. You know, there's four or five yeah, top section huge. bands. A couple of them are actually walking distance from the, from the college. You, it, it's, it's, you know, college comes first, um, but it's not just Corey band. And I'm sure there's, there's other Welsh brass band uh, yeah. bands out there. We had Trevi Tradiga band do a concert with the Welsh Guards um, uh, two autumns ago as well. I think that was in September of 19, which was fantastic. And it's great for, you know, they play differently to Corey. And, you know, it's great to get that. And some of the other bands as well. We work in, we're starting to work with the youth band, youth band network, which is very exciting. Um, but, you know, it, it's tough times. The educational sector has been, in, especially in the arts, has been hit very badly by this and was hit very badly before this as well. And we're trying to build relationships where we are you know come to us let's see what we can do bob and i already do um in the autumn and spring term um a, 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 an open uh, saturday where you can come along and sit in the brass band and we will we will bring out our best top brass band to work with you depending on how many people turn up you know so if we haven't got any tuba players we'll we'll make sure we've got plenty of tuba players and your cornets and trombones will will be there and then I will tend to work with a more of a children's band kind of a uh, project during the day. The parents come in, they go shopping into town, they come back about four hours later <laughs> and we put, put a little uh, work in progress concert on and it's been very successful. Uh, but there are, it is a college of music and drama and an art centre in its own right. And um, it's busy. So, you know, it, yeah. we, we, we can only get in there once a term to do these open, these outreach kind of projects. Um, even though they're they're in in the college, so I, yeah. I think think big, and you know, go for it, and don't don't sit around wasting time. And and one of the other things that we're really developing at the moment is the junior department of the uh, of the of the Welsh College, the brass junior department. So as Roger said, we do these uh, these uh, Saturday Saturday um, workshops, bringing people in from uh, the community brass bands. And we hope to develop that even more in the next few years. I mean, that's so important. Well, that's kind of my role at uh, Brass Band England is to do with Brass Foundations. And so that's where our work is. And that's why we wanted to speak to you guys tonight. You know, that is 
such an important part of our futures, isn't it? So, you know, we're giving those children opportunities to do what we all love doing. And it's such great fun. It's not like having a job, is it? It's just, you know, we all love it. And that's fab. Listen, I could speak to you two for hours, but I don't think we're allowed to. So we better go. But it's been really fantastic to speak to you, Bob and Roger. Thank you so much for giving your Monday evening up. And hopefully I'll see you soon sometime. That'd be nice. Bye, Paul. Bye. Cheers. All the very best. Take care, Bye. guys. Thank you, Sarah. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Bye.